Remember, you have to flip the action and reaction. Right. Up. Beautiful. Keep it up. It's a dance. Communicate with your opponent through eye contact. Take. Not bad for a podcast creator. Not bad at all. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So, any last thoughts on sword choreography? Where it's led you, how it's shaped your life? Well, I suppose it's, like I said before, it's a dance, even with an opponent. Well, thank you, Jacqueline. I'm gonna miss this. Are you gonna put these training sessions in the podcast? No, no, no. That was just for fun. I keep myself out of the narrative. I believe that makes for a messy storytelling. I like keeping my focus on my subjects. <laughs> Merry Christmas, and thank you again. Merry Christmas. Are those special Christmas flavor? Yeah. Oh, Helena's bakery started making them yesterday. Wow. And I just finished up with Jacqueline Snyder. Nice. Well, have you decided what angle you want to take? I think I'm going with sword choreography as a metaphor for conflict and communication. You're like a Michelangelo with a slab of marble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, by the way, Max and I are going to a Christmas pub crawl on Friday. You should come. Help wake up the Christmas spirit. You know I have plenty of Christmas spirit. I'm just going cozier these days. Tonight, I'm taking another stab at my mom's mold cider recipe. I know you miss your mom, especially this time of year, but I'm worried you're missing out. We live in New York. You should let the city help you celebrate. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Janice was looking for you. She wanted to set up a meeting. Yeah, I heard she was making rounds about how to optimize listenership. I'm worried life and the likes on the chopping block. She set up a meeting with me yesterday. It was fine. Of course it was. Live Life Winning is one of the most popular podcasts out there right now. Uh, Janice, six o'clock. I think I'm gonna work from home today. Yeah. yeah. Now, an ongoing misconception is that apps and our phones create distance between people. But the sous vide app is the perfect example of the exact opposite. It's like a book club, but with recipes, real-time cooking parties over long distances. Um, our market research indicates that this new generation of consumers is review-driven. For a Christmas theme, we thought it'd be a fun idea to incorporate cartoon characters like elves, reindeer, or even Santa Claus himself, if that's not too hackneyed. <laughs> hackneyed. <laughs> maybe. Um, or maybe something classic, like Ugg boots? So many studies. All this market research. I guess I was just looking for something a little more alive, raw. Alive. Raw. Yeah. 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 We can do that. Either way, really looking forward to your pitch presentation on the 23rd. Thank you for coming in. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Alive. Raw. Yeah, you should probably just give this account to Nadia. Don't you think? I mean, I mean, we all know Christmas content. It's it's not your forte anyway. Beth Barca should know that the creative director is on it. We need to win this account for the agency. It'll keep us tapped in and relevant. And speaking of Christmas content, I'm feeling rather inspired. I'm gearing up to go see the Schultzes for the holidays. Tanya and I are actually meeting in a few hours to discuss travel plans. Tanya Schultz, your bestie from childhood, maybe, on your drive to Vermont. You two can discuss why you're not a couple already. Maybe. You know, the latest Live Life Winning podcast made me think of you two. It talked about how people ignore good things that are right in front of them because they think that everything worthwhile must be a challenge. 
That's not a revolutionary philosophy, Brian. It's a cliche. Tanya is my friend. Her family is like my family. End of story. Get out of here. Go do some work. Think about it. last time. You know, I think the card mom was a good addition. Mm -hmm. You know, if this meeting does happen with Janice... If you're unable to hide from her until 2036... Do you think I should come up with pitches for new podcasts? No. I think you should stand by Life in the Lake. She comes from a true crime background. I mean, she wants things to have a big hook, you know? To be sensational. Maybe I could do a series on a spy or a tightrope walker. <laughs> What makes your podcast so much fun is that you find everyday people who do everyday things, but you end up wanting to keep hanging out with them. You're authentic. So be it. So no spy? Maybe not. <laughs> Fine. They only had one raspberry left. But I thought I'd let you have it. To repay me, you can do the driving to your parents' house. About that. Okay, you know that huge pine tree outside my parents' kitchen window? Yeah, the squirrel hotel. It fell over onto the roof, and now they have to repair it, so they've decided that they won't be hosting Christmas this year. Are they sure? You know, maybe we can help them. They're pretty decided. In fact, they're coming here to spend Christmas in New York. I'm a bit worried it's gonna be tight at my place, but the silver lining is now they get to meet Cliff. Wait, um, Cliff? I thought you weren't that into him. I forgot to update you. Okay, we had this great weekend. He took me upstate to this festival, and we went ice skating, and <laughs> something clicked into place. And it turns out, he's really a Christmas guy, so I think Mom and Dad are gonna love him. I'm a Christmas guy. Of course. It's not a contest. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Cliff's out of town, but he'll be back on Christmas Eve. You know, of course, you're welcome to join us, but I also know you may have your own traditions here, so... Oh. Do you not want me to join you guys? No, no, you, you can. You know, I just, I know it's not Vermont, so. And that's okay. I mean, I wouldn't want to get in the way of Cliff. No, you, you wouldn't be. Mm. Mm. Uh, oh, you just got it. I think I was wrong when I used the term cliché to describe your assessment of me and Tanya's relationship. You know how we always say there's a fine line between cliché and classic? Classic being universal, undeniable. Maybe this is classic. Maybe you're right about me and Tanya. Finally. You know how we always talk about that aha moment? Last night, there was some raspberry jam on her chin and it was just this aha. It was a moment. Can I just point out that you are talking about all this in advertising terms? Of course she has this new boyfriend named Cliff who's a real Christmas guy. What? I thought you wanted the two of us to get together. But now she's unavailable. You know, today, Live Life Winning, they are doing call-ins for a special Christmas episode. You could call them, you know, get some neutral advice. Plus, you love a good focus group. Ginny, can I see you for a minute? We're gonna need the numbers oh. on every show we have in broadcast right now, especially Life and the Like. Now, where is Elise, anyway? Just like he is. Hey. Hi. You're hiding from Janice, aren't you? Just a little. What are you recording? The big Christmas call-in. Though Charlotte Noel just canceled, so I have to go at it all alone. Actually? No, no. This is perfect. No, no. no. You can co-host with me. No, 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 no. That's not really my skill set. There you go. You look great. <sighs> okay. Are we recording now? Hello and happy holidays, yes, everyone. Are. 
This is Bonnie Medley, host of Live Life Winning, and today is our epic Christmas special where we answer any of your holiday questions, whether it be hosting anxiety or what cookie Santa really loves. And joining me today is our special guest, Miss Yuletide, a brilliant expert on all things Christmas. So let's get started with our first caller here. We've got a Chris Kringle. <laughs> I'm guessing that's an alias. Talk to us. What is your Christmas conundrum? Hello. Uh, my conundrum is that I think I may be in love with my longtime friend, but I'm not sure. But also, time is of the essence because she has just gotten a new boyfriend. That's a classic one. Classic. See, that's what I thought. I've known her since we were kids. Christmas was a big deal for her family. My family was always busy with work, and because we're Pakistani, we didn't really celebrate it. So they always adopted me for the holiday. I was actually supposed to spend Christmas in Vermont with them, but plans changed, and now they're coming to New York instead. And I don't know if I'm even invited. She says this guy is a real Christmas guy, and I thought maybe I could be a better Christmas guy. What I need is a strategy to, to win her heart and her family's and secure my spot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm gonna let my co-host, Miss Yuletide, take this one. Why don't you go ahead? So, you wanna secure your spot. Sounds like a going out of business crush. You have known her for a long time. She now has a boyfriend, and suddenly you're interested. I recommend you leave her be. You'll get over it. <laughs> you talk about being a better Christmas guy. Is Christmas spirit something you could really compete at? Why not? Christmas is a commodity often used by companies to sell you something. Why can't I use it to win over the potential love of my life? Because the spirit in Christmas spirit harkens the ephemeral, the magical, not the strategic. That's cute and all, but I have less than a week. I need an airtight playbook. Oh, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a book. Cute. But... No need to condescend, Chris Kringle. Oh, there's plenty of need, Ms. Yuletide. Didn't this start with you not even knowing if you love this woman? Yet you're more concerned about winning than sorting out your feelings. Isn't this podcast called Live Life Winning? <laughs> well, yeah, but I... And, and don't they say, he who hesitates... He who hesitates what? Don't remember the rest. Well, I know how the rest of this call goes. Bye. That <laughs> <laughs> was crazy. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I knew you had it in you. Whoa. Life and the like. Life and the like. Life and the like. I don't know. It trips you up. There's too many L's. Why so many L's? I think there's only two. Okay. I will admit that long form, thoughtful podcast storytelling is not my specialty. I like to think of things like what makes the listener have a heated debate with their friends over dinner? What propels the listener from one episode to the next? Getting to know someone, learning about their life philosophy, taking away a little inspiration. Yeah, I'm gonna need you to pivot. I'm gonna let you hold on to life and the like, but I want you to think of things like cliffhangers. Something juicy, like an episode of The Housewives. I like to look to reality TV for inspiration. <gasps> oh, I want you to unearth that sassiness I heard in that Chris Kringle call the other day, the, the sassiness that got social media talking. I, I don't even know why everyone's all a flutter. You have this typical situation where an indecisive man wants something because suddenly he can't have it. He talks about using Christmas as a strategy to help him win. Like it's some sort of game. Christmas is supposed to be the season of love, not the season of winning. There it is. The season of winning. If he wants to get the girl, let him try. In fact, maybe you even instruct him. Wait, wait, I I'm sorry. I, I was just venting. This wasn't supposed to be a pitch. Ooh, it'll be like a holiday special. On the surface, you can teach him to be a better Christmas guy or whatever, but really, it's all a tool to win this woman's love. The deadline, boyfriend's arrival. 
That's it. Christmas is love. Or maybe it's heartbreak. Find out in the next episode. You can fast track, edit as you go. We'll release the whole series on Christmas Eve. Oh, I love a good brainstorming session. Wouldn't this be dishonest? No, it will be a reveal. Okay, and um, what'll motivate this family to go along with this? On the surface, as far as everyone else is concerned, he'll be their guide for the ultimate Christmas in New York. Also, perks will set him up in some swoon-worthy luxury rental. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's it. Off you go. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, send in Patrick. No, Christine. Did I fire Christine? Never mind. Just send somebody in. Okay, Christmas in the park. Christmas in the mall. Found it. He's a higher up at this ad agency here in the city. Of course. The commodity, etc. So are you gonna move forward with it? I have to, if I want here and now to keep producing my work. Either way, first obstacle is getting him to agree to this in the first place. You know what you could do? I dare you to go into his office and yell, Chris Kringle? <laughs> is there a Chris Kringle here? <laughs> I just might. Oh, you seem serious. Hey, Dad, it's me. How's it going over there? Have you guys got the neighbor kid to put up the Christmas tree yet? Are you guys actually gonna do anything to celebrate this year? Anyways, um, I'm here. Give my love to mom. He's lost. Who? My father? No. He who hesitates is lost. That's how the saying goes. Oh. It's you. It's me, Miss Yuletide. My actual name is Elise. Daniel Khan. Wow, that's your name on the door. My father's. I wanted to apologize. I was abrupt. I'm sorry. So you came here to apologize? Also, I think I realized there might be something to your mission. And what better combined with a love story than Christmas? So you came here to encourage me? No. I, uh... May I? To make it up to you, I want to help you by featuring your journey on my podcast, Life in the Lake. I surmise from our curt conversation that organizing Christmas festivities doesn't come naturally to you. That being the better Christmas guy would be a mission, a feat. Possibly. Well, it comes naturally to me, especially Christmas in this great city we live in. You asked about a playbook. Well, your playbook, with my behind-the-scenes help, is to show your friend and her family the best possible Christmas in New York, becoming the better Christmas guy. But the real mission is to make this um, woman, Tanya. Tanya, realize what's already in front of her, real lasting love, before this boyfriend even gets a chance. You just have to record the whole thing. Yeah. Right. but. Doesn't that make your love story even better? Something worth sharing with the world? Oh, also, my podcast production company can offer Tanya's family a stunning holiday rental. I can send you the link. It's within walking distance to some of New York's best Christmassy things. As tempting as it all sounds, I feel like I'd be luring people I care about into a ruse, and for that reason, I'm gonna have to say no. That's disappointing, but understandable. Well, thank you for, for your time. One more thing. You said you were worried about not being included in the festivities. Well, this podcast would mean spending a lot of time with Tanya and her family it would necessitate it. I'm sorry again for the other day. Hey. Can you airdrop me the link to that luxury rental just out of curiosity? Sure.
Here, just give me those. Thank you for your chivalry. Hmm? What do we always say? Chivalry is dead. Chivalry is chivalry. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not dead. OK, why are you being weird? Now, you got a pitch presentation coming up? Actually, yes. <laughs> that explains it. I'm so worried that the guest bed is going to hurt my dad's back. You know, I got the weirdest offer today. Talk to me. Have you heard of that podcast, Life in the Lake? Yeah, I've heard of it, but, you know, I don't really listen to podcasts. Well, the host is a friend of a friend, and she and I got into a heated debate about the Christmas spirit. She and I? Heated? No, not... <laughs> no. Okay. What I'm saying is she heard about my holiday plans and approached me about doing a podcast where I'm assigned the challenge of showing you and your family the best New York Christmas ever. <laughs> I said no, of course. Wait, what? Why? All that recording, this annoying woman just following us around, wiring us up with mics, pulling us aside for little interviews, ugh. Yeah, I guess, but I don't know. I mean, it sounds kind of neat, right? I know both mom and dad wouldn't mind talking about their love of Christmas, especially now, right? Since they can't do their usual extravaganza. Well, she did offer us this really nice luxury rental. It seems too good to be true. Let me see that. We're doing this. Can I have my phone back? No. Mistakes. What I learned from Jacqueline that the trick to sword fighting is trust. A balance of committing to moves while keeping the other person safe. Hello? Hi, Elise. It's Danielle. Who? Chris Kringle. Oh, hi. How can I help you? I want to do it. I want to do the podcast. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> great. What made you change your mind? Maybe I do have a thing or two to learn about Christmas. Also, the luxury rental was a huge job for Tanya. Great. I'm excited. Me too. OK. Bye. Bye. Well, all right then. Oh, Broadway show. That's a good one. Ah, yes. What else, what else, what else? Now, you have to be an expert on New Year Christmas. As much as you've been trying to avoid it. I'm just gonna read up on it like I do everything else. Fake it till you make it. <sighs> I'm not good at faking it. I'll take any advice you have. What makes Christmas in New York so amazing? It's like I've been telling you, just step outside. No, I need something more solid, more activity driven. I need a strategy. Strategy. That's not your usual uh, strategy. I need a place to start. Hey, we got this. Keep going. As I build this okay. apparatus. Well, there you have it, dear listeners. Despite being mostly a homebody, it was now up to me to become an expert on all things Christmas in New York. So with the help of some trusty guidebooks, I started drawing up a playbook in the hopes of helping Chris Kringle get the girl. So the thing about Christmas in New York is that it's almost impossible not to find a Christmas that speaks to your heart, feels like home. Speaking of home, what do you think? Wow, you really outdid yourself on the decoration, but I'm not really hearing a strategy. Oh, no need. If we focus on the Christmas experience, the intended result of winning Tanya's heart will come naturally. So just relax and let the Christmas spirit wash over you. Still doesn't seem like a plan. Patience, Chris Kringle. Now our first task is to prepare for the family's arrival in one hour. And I am gonna start recording now. Hello, world. <laughs> oh, I picked these up. I thought they maybe have some guidance. No, 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 we don't need those. You're gonna have to trust me. Danielle, we have to make our moves from the heart, from the gut, <laughs> not from a guide. You know, I think the best thing to make them feel the most at home is making sure they have personalized stockings. Why are we making five stockings? Um, 
Well, Tanya, her parents, you, and Cliff. Why does Cliff get a stocking? He's invited. Oops. <laughs> You're a child. Hey, so I thought it'd be really fun if the drink of the night could be Manhattan's with a Christmas twist. So the way we infuse these New York drinks with Christmas spirit is by adding a little bit of nutmeg-flavored simple syrup. It was my mom's recipe, which will be posted on the Life in the Light blog. So let me get this straight. The way we're constructing this fabulous New York Christmas is by making a drink called a Manhattan. So far, this feels vague and aimless. So far as in the first hour and a half of our process? Doesn't look like patience is one of your virtues. I just avoid procrastination. Okay, look at it this way. Sure, we could go straight to Rockefeller Center for ice skating. See, now that sounds perfect. But why do the first thing you think of? It's so impersonal. Now, regardless, we're on the same team. So let's work together. We have, what, 15 minutes before the family arrives? Do you want to spend all this time arguing? No. Right. So, shake. You got it. Bill? Mm hmm. Oh, I'm very accepted of this. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, my God. Dad, look at this. Oh. Wow. This place is amazing. <sighs> So beautiful. As Tanya's family arrives, I've instructed Danielle to ever so stealthily try to tease out if there was one Christmassy thing that always makes them think of New York City. Maybe something they've always dreamt of doing. Wow. That may seem like cheating, but it's just a way to make the journey more personal. Let me take your jacket. Why? Because we're inside. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, let me... I watch as Danielle takes Tanya's coat. Just let me take it for you. Okay, thank you. But she seems more confused than appreciative. My, my arm's stuck. Oh, I got get your arm stuck. No. It's not charming. Okay. It's more of an awkward struggle. Hi. We just speak right yeah, yeah, just speak as you normally would. Oh. So, how are you feeling about being here? Well, I'll certainly miss not spending Christmas at my home in Vermont. But why not take the opportunity and make an adventure out of it, right? And this podcast. <laughs> We're just thrilled to be doing it. Patty worked so hard to make everyone's Christmas special. I'm happy that this can be a break for her. She can just relax and enjoy the holiday without having to coordinate everything. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to capturing the festivities with my new hobby. Actually, Patty calls it a hobby. I call it my new artistic pursuit. <laughs> That's it. Smile. Oh. Hold it. <laughs> having to live up to my parents' level of Christmas celebration here in New York was intimidating. But now Danielle is doing the podcast and being our Christmas guide, he, he's a great friend. And I understand there's someone else in the picture. Cliff, yeah. You know, usually it takes a long time for me to want to introduce someone to my parents, but when I saw the stocking over there with his name on it, I can't explain it. Something, it just felt right, fit. I think it's going great. They like your stockings, and I'll admit it, those weird little nutmeg Manhattans. <laughs> what? Do you disagree? No. Um, I just wonder if maybe there's a different angle. Like? I don't know. Um, what if it's less get the girl and more she loves me, she loves me not? Less of a competition and more of a rumination. You don't think I stand a chance, do you? No, I just don't want to record hours upon hours of your heart getting rejected. There's not much of an arc there. Not much of an arc. You lack competitive spirit. Did I just hear someone say chestnuts roasting on an open fire? I've got a great idea. Oh, let's hear it. 
Are you guys excited? Absolutely. Oh, yes. This chestnut guy is the best kept secret in all of New York City. He's always moving around from location to location, which oh. is what makes him so special. Or should I say, Christmas magical. Let's go get some. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, these smell so good. What do you think? Wow. I mean, this is really extraordinary. I, I had no idea you had this in your repertoire. Thank you. You're welcome. I was skeptical at first, but Tanya did give him a look. How could I describe it? Like a romantic reassessment. No, a, a double take spanning decades. Could there be a twinge of hope for Danielle after all? Ugh, no, please. You have no idea what you're doing, and he can probably tell. What's next? What's next, you might ask? A New York Christmas classic, of course. One that's beautiful and fun at once extravagant and free of charge. Strolling down Fifth Avenue and taking in the stunning window displays. In fact, you wouldn't have a proper New York Christmas without this requisite tradition. Oh, sorry. Hi. Peppermint hot chocolate. There's a shop right over there that makes the best. Is this your spectacular New York activity? What do you call these? New York hot chocolate? Your spectacular New York activity seems to be sarcasm. No, this is a treat that goes along with our next activity. Chestnuts on an open fire was amazing. You saw the way she looked at me? Yes, I did. <laughs> Which is why I'm trying to roll with that momentum. You're recording? I'm always recording. Some of the best material comes from the in-between, unexpected moments. Besides, remember, this is half guide to New York Christmas, half your journey. I don't think my journey is that interesting. Everyone's journey is interesting. OK, uh, follow me. I'm really excited about this one. OK, so this is one of the best things about Christmas in New York, the stunning window displays. I thought we could do a dry run and then come back with Tanya and her family after dark when there's more atmosphere. Sounds great. Really? Yeah. I want to give credit where credit's due. Okay. This display is impressive, but what do you think's going on here? He's going to a Christmas party? Yes, a dear version of an ugly sweater party. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the deer is masquerading as a reindeer because he's a spy. Has worker health and safety checked out these conditions? I am concerned they're not wearing gloves. <laughs> well, this one's simple. That's you and Tanya on Christmas Eve. Your long-standing love realized and your mid-dance. It's been. Here you are. Thanks, Elise. Okay. This is a big part of New York Christmas, taking in the magnificent window displays down Fifth oh, Avenue. Look. Our first stop, this whimsical winter wonderland. Oh, Danielle, oh. it's so magical. Oh. <laughs> Agreed. It's just yeah. wonderful. Oh, thanks. So, what do you think? Such a classic New York activity. It's one of those things I always mean to do, but never do. You know? I do. I realize there are more and more things like that in my life. Like CrossFit or reading through that pile of New Yorkers? No, I... What do you think's going on in there? Um... They're trying to get us to buy a $400 sweater? Oh, sorry. Cliff and I are in a debate on whether he should fly into JFK or LaGuardia. OK. What were you saying? What's happening in there? Like, why is that elf climbing that ladder? 
They're, they're not even wearing gloves. Aren't they afraid of getting frostbite? What's up with that? Yeah, I, well, I'm not sure. I mean, is it supposed to make sense? You're the one in advertising. <sighs> Dear listeners, sometimes all you have to do is step outside and let the city help you celebrate. But back to our number one topic, the romance. Danielle seems to have had a little setback as far as interest from Tanya. But he is determined to keep trying, which is good, right? You don't just give up. Though I, I still can't help but feel that maybe, maybe they're not right for one another. Note to self, if this is the case and it all ends in defeat, is that our story? Seems kind of somber. Maybe, maybe flip-flop love story with Christmas, B story to A story. I am feeling inspired. What if we do an elaborate window display in our front window next year? I can get some mannequins. Mom, and... do you really want the whole town standing in front of our window? I do. You... <laughs> <laughs> Why did you think about that? Me? Yeah. <laughs> the thing about sous vide is that you're not actually alone when you're cooking. It's interactive. Okay, but should we avoid anything romance related like we normally do for these holiday campaigns since it narrows the field of receptive viewers? I think a single viewer might see the ad as hopeful, full of possibility. Maybe we should just do away with the whole idea of reviewing all together. Think of this, a split screen, two people, two different kitchens, but they're looking at each other affectionately. What do you think of the excerpts I sent? Uh, the family, the Schultzes. Is it? Yeah. They're so nice. Aren't they? Hanging out with them is like dipping a cookie into a warm glass of milk. That's a great way to put it. Cookies? Yeah. Then there's just mush. Oh, where's the danger? They need the family to argue, get in each other's way. Maybe one of them disapproves of Danielle tries to sabotage the whole thing. I'm sorry, um, wasn't this supposed to be a journey where I guide him, help him win Christmas and the girl? I'm gonna roll that back. Things are way too easy for Danielle right now. We need more drama, things going wrong. We are really not doing justice to this whole love triangle thing. I mean, this Cliff guy, he's not even around. It's just like a line, flat. Hey, Dad, just trying to catch you in between meetings. I wanted to give you an update on the sous vide pitch. It's going great. I've actually managed to effectively convey the Christmas spirit. <laughs> it's exciting, actually. Uh, anyways, uh, Fred and Patty Schultz say hi. Okay, bye. Hey. Hi. I wanted to pitch a bold new tactic to you. Sure, I mean, we're a team, your input is welcome. Okay, so I'm thinking, why not just be direct? Tell her how I feel, you know, why all the spectacle? Just fast track it. Well, because, what's romantic about fast tracking? Where would the great story be, hmm? As of now, it'd be one and a half episodes worth. One and a half episodes worth. 
May I remind you that we are talking about my actual life here? Um, it, well, it's worth mentioning that for our upcoming strategy, I was actually uh, inspired by your point of view. I know you're trying to appeal to my ego, but go on. By showing Tanya and her family all New York has to offer, what are we missing? Home. So how do we bring home to New York? Do you have any favorite activities you miss? Yes, snowshoeing. Snowshoeing, great. In New York? Doesn't New York have everything? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't want to say anything, but I was really going to miss snowshoeing this yeah. year. Oh, so who would have known snowshoeing in New York? <laughs> well, they do say that New York has everything. Oh, mm. including hot chocolate. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait up. Wait for me. Come on, Danielle. Oh, I... Oh, you're recording. Uh, yeah, I don't mean to be sneaky. It's just you never know what you're going to miss. It's for those in-between unexpected moments, right? And you always have to be prepared. That's exactly my philosophy. <laughs> I have to admit that I listened to a couple of your podcasts. Oh. You are so wonderful, Elise. You're so reflective and warm. You really pulled me in. Thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> Snowball fight, it's on! Don't you do it. What? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's their thing. They're so competitive. Yeah, I definitely noticed Danielle's competitive. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you, how did you meet Danielle? Oh, I, um, I met him through this podcast thing a little bit ago. And then I approached him for this project. I would have thought you've known each other for a much longer time. No, no, but that feeling is great for the podcast. <laughs> Hey, dear, I had some chocolate for you. Hey. <laughs> tell mom, tell mom to come over. I'm gonna go check on your dad. Okay, Thanks. Okay. see you later. <laughs> I just wanted to thank you for everything. I mean, my parents are having such a wonderful time and that luxury apartment that you got us is unbelievable. It's been fun for me too, so. Oh, good, good. <laughs> Listen, um, can I pick your brain? For a minute, just woman to woman. I sure. As you know, my boyfriend Cliff is coming back on Christmas Eve, and right. I'm really excited to see him. I just, I'm a little conflicted too. These past few days, I've been having a strange twinge of feelings for Danielle. I mean, we've known each other 30 years. Why now, out of the blue? I mean, it's understandable. Danielle's a great guy, despite always having to be right. <laughs> no, but. If I'm being honest, today you two look like you were in a rom-com. Right? That's exactly what I'm saying. I, is it possible that I've overlooked true love for all this time? Isn't this like a classic love story? You know, but then yeah. I think of Cliff and I... I get that roller coaster feeling in my stomach, you know? And he's only been gone a few days and I already miss him. Jeez, that, that sounds like a real love triangle. What do I do? Um, well, it must be hard for you to judge having one of these men here and not the other. And, you know, all this warm holiday celebration kind of makes it uneven. Right. How about seeing if Cliff can come back early? I mean, it's, it's a shame he should miss all of this, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's worth a try. Good, okay. Oh, this is off the record, right? Of course, I, I don't even have my recording equipment set up. I, um, and even if I did, I, I wouldn't put anything on the podcast. You asked me not to. Thank you, Elise. Seriously, thank you. Of course. Girls, here's your hot chocolate. <laughs> Wait up! I'm coming! Oh, uh, here I come. Let's get these snowshoes off and go shopping. Okay, folks. See you later tonight. Thank you. I still think this is madness. You think ice cream is exclusively a summer thing? I disagree. Can't we just go and eat it inside where it's warm? That would defeat the purpose. At 22 degrees outside, it's colder than the ice cream. We don't have to worry about it melting all over our hands. We can take our time and enjoy it. No panic. Okay. Mmm, mm, this is good. That's beside the point. Today went well, don't you think? 
Yeah. Although I feel like we're losing momentum. We should really be doing something right now to get you and Tanya together. I also feel like we should be ratcheting up tension. You know, like if Cliff were here, we'd do something like a arm wrestling contest. Arm wrestling contest? That doesn't mm -hmm. sound like your style. I think we're thinking about this too hard. We should take a break. But that doesn't sound like your style. Sometimes it helps to not focus on the end result so hard. Distance equals perspective. Let your mind drift. <laughs> what is that from some kind of self-care blog? No, I actually came up with it for a cruise campaign. It still applies though. You don't seem very eager. Are you having second thoughts? No, it's just sometimes clearing your mind leaves room for a solution. Ibuprofen ad. <laughs> oh, you got some. Oh, no. See? That's user error. Don't blame the temperature. So how'd you get into advertising? My parents are in advertising. They're the Khan and Khan and Clark. Right. Do you want to know a secret? Sure. There's no Clark. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just the name they added to sound more formidable. <laughs> oh, OK. I actually got the firm a sous vide pitch. It's in three days. Wait, is that the cooking app? Mm-hmm. Wow, impressive. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> My parents are running the London office, and I'm in New York trying to keep the company revived and relevant. They're a little stuck in their ways. Is that why you never spend Christmas together? I mean, with all the year-end work, it's practical. It's a given. I guess in my family, our tradition is not spending Christmas together. <laughs> and you're okay with that? I mean, since you have the Schultzes? Not really. But I don't know how I would turn that around. Aren't you the one who works in the field about making people want things they didn't even know they wanted? <laughs> I have a pitch for you. How about you just invite them? Hmm? After all, you're developing all these New York Christmas skills. Well, what about you? What are you doing after the podcast is done? You heading home for the holidays? Wait, um, let me guess. California. No. Arizona? Can we just put a pin in that just for now? Okay. <laughs> How about this? You show me your favorite New York Christmas tradition. It doesn't have to be in a guidebook or even part of the podcast. Just yours. All right. Let's go. OK. OK. <laughs> I hope she's still there. Lola, am I too late? Oh, we sold out. But I set a box aside for you. <laughs> and was actually going to drop it by. Thank you so much, Lola. I, I've been busy with a work project. Actually, Lola, this is Danielle, Hi. my current podcast subject. We're doing a podcast on love and Christmas. That seems worthwhile. <laughs> well, nice to meet you, Danielle. It's nice to meet you, too. I've been coming here for these Christmas cookies for, uh, for a long time. Let me guess, she did a podcast about you. Oh, no, my sister. A champion barrel racer. Wow. One of my favorites. <laughs> you probably say that to everyone. <laughs> I'm hoping to be a favorite, too. We'll see. OK. Thank you, Lola. Welcome. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye. Where are we going now? Surprise. Surprise, surprise. My mom and I used to live up north in Every year, sometime around Christmas, we'd drive down and go to Helena's Bakery, get these special Christmas cookies. And let me guess, you both would come to this bench and eat these cookies. Um, no, actually. We walked down this main street so many times and somehow never saw this park. Then, two years ago, I was already living in the city, and um, it was, was the year my mom passed away. 
I came down to get the cookies around our usual time, and uh, I came across this park. Clear as day. It's been here since the 1800s, but sometimes I feel like she left it for me. If that makes sense. It does. These are delicious. I <laughs> know, right? To me, they taste like being a child at Christmas. <laughs> so now every year I sit here and eat our favorite cookies, listen to my mom's favorite music, and stare at the stars. That's so poetic. You should put it in a podcast. Oh, no, I try to keep myself out of the podcast. Anyway, that's, it's not really <laughs> interesting. I... Didn't you recently tell me that everyone's journey is interesting? We're getting off track. Off track off what? The mission. The, the podcast, you and Tanya. Right, okay. By, by running through the park in snowshoes, it, doesn't give you and Tanya a chance to take a step closer, look into each other's eyes. What are some quieter indoor activities you could do? Are they like game nights? Great. All cozy on the couch. You know, we should do that tomorrow night. We're running out of time. Oh, wait. Thank you for sharing this with me. Nothing. No, that's not true. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> you can't see Mine that. are done. Mine are done. No, oh, you're not going to get it. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh Daniel. Yeah, pause. Sure. Oh. Look at that, so cute. Yeah, it is. Hey, Fred, when you upload mm. those pictures, would you mind sending me your favorites? They'll be great for the podcast blog. Could you send them to me too? Oh, well, of course. See that, Patty? High demand. Yes, I heard that, Fred. <laughs> oh, I love Celebrity Guess Who. Oh, wait, don't we need an even number for that? What happens when Tanya gets here? Yeah, I can sit this one out. I probably should oh, anyway. Oh, absolutely not. We'll have three on one team, and then Danielle and Elise, you'll be on a team together. That's fair. Hmm. So Elise, what are you doing on the actual holiday? Well, after I post the podcast, I'm gonna make my mom's cornbread stuffing. Oh. If I can figure it out. And then curl up on my couch and watch A Christmas Carol and Rudolph and- Well, you can join us. Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, the whole shebang. Sure. Thank you so much for the invite, but I wouldn't want to be in the way of anything. What on earth would you be in the way of? Hi, everyone. I have a surprise. Everyone, meet Cliff. Oh, <laughs> he came a, early. What a great surprise. <laughs> Hi, darling. Oh. Hi, Mom. Hi. This is my mom. Hi. 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 Cliff, this is my dad, Fred. Cliff, great to meet you. Hi, Cliff. So nice to meet you. This is Danielle. So nice to meet you, Cliff. Yeah, you as well. I've heard a lot of good things about you. Likewise. <laughs> Still not as much conflict as I'd like. But my main question is, how do we bring the big love triangle to the surface? Actually, that's very much in the works. Last night, Cliff arrived early. Everyone was surprised. Big twist. He seems like a worthy opponent. Tensions will surely rise. I know it definitely threw Danielle back into competition mode. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the love triangle between Danielle, Tanya, and you. It is delightfully clear in all of the footage I listened to, all your little protestations about how they're not right for each other. Those are some good breadcrumbs. I don't really, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Denial. Oh, it's brilliant. Use it. And by the way, 
Given the rushed nature of all of this, I am not gonna have time to go over this before you have to send it into Kevin. So I am trusting you. Do not let me down. Yes, ma'am. These white lies are piling up. This family is wonderful, and this podcast is a whole trick on them. <laughs> on top of that, I'm the one who encouraged Tanya to invite Cliff out early, which was a complete betrayal to Danielle. The last thing I want. Yeah, that's a lot to keep track of. Ball, please. And before that, at least we were in it together. And we're on the same team. Well, does this other love triangle exist? I have noticed a different energy about you lately. I mean, there might have been a moment where it could have existed, but things went another way. Okay. So what are you gonna do? The best thing to do is take a step back and go back to Janice's plan A. I'm gonna help Danielle get the girl and that'll be better for everyone. Except maybe Cliff, who seems like a great guy, honestly. What about you? I get to keep my podcast. You know how much that means to me. I actually have our next activity planned, like a grand finale. Well, tell me. Carriage rides through Central Park. Hey guys. Guys. Yeah. I'm gonna picture you. You and the horse. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't I think of this? Quintessential New York. Patty and Fred are gonna love this. Okay, I am gonna do everything I can to get you and Tanya in one of those carriages alone. And then I think it's finally time to speak from the heart. Let her know how you feel, huh? Let's secure your spot. Why are you acting so weird? Huh? No, um, I, I am just focused. Our deadline is fast approaching. Don't you want to get the girl? I guess. Yes, of course. All right, everyone. Today, I am taking the reins, pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> to make everything more streamlined, I have created carriage assignments. <clears throat> so carriage number one, Patty, Fred, and Cliff. Great chance oh. to get to know each other. Huh? So, carriage number two is Tanya and Danielle. Great. Well, uh, what about you, Elise? Oh, uh, no, I, I'm gonna stay here. More room overall, it's better. But the carriages seat up to four. Yes, yeah. but everyone should be able to stretch out, enjoy. Well, either way, wouldn't Cliff and Tanya like to sit together since he just got in yesterday? I mean, I certainly don't mind riding with you lovely folks. Uh, nor do I. I can do it. Oh, why don't we do rock, paper, scissors? Great. I'm in. <laughs> Great. Oh, yeah. Oh, I guess I All right. Hey! Hey! Come on. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Elise, you can come sure. with us. Okay. Come on. Okay. 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 Bye. Okay. Take pictures. So, um, you two uh, known each other since first grade? Yeah, we grew up around the corner from each other. Christmas has always been a big deal with the family, and me too. Oh, I meant to say, it was so nice of your family to make me a stocking. No, that was us, me and Elise. We did it for the podcast. Uh, not that they wouldn't make one for you. Yeah, I'm sure if we were at home, my mom would have made you one. Oh, yeah, I'm sure, too. I, I mean, I have one. <laughs> so, um, you and Elise are together, right? Together? I, uh, saw her fix your lapel. Uh, looked a little intimate, just assumed. Elise is just here recording the podcast. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're not an item. No. Right. Well, either way, I look forward to listening to the podcast. Well, I did tell everyone you were a Christmas guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Such a gentleman. Good, sir. Uh, you go first. No, I insist. Come on. <laughs> oh, no, I think yeah. I'm finally doing after all these years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I know. Is that a cardinal? I saw 
so beautiful. Oh, yeah. There's beauty all around us if you're looking close enough. This is amazing. <laughs> A pleasure, man. <laughs> So here we are in beautiful Central Park, having just done the classic Christmas carriage ride. <laughs> I get a feeling Patty and Fred enjoyed it. <laughs> they are nodding emphatically. Now, since I have Patty and Fred to myself for a minute, what are your thoughts on Cliff? Well, I think we like him. Well, I think so too. Mm -hmm. He seems considerate and genuine. Oh, and they seem to adore each other. Well, what do you think, Elise? I suppose I'm curious to see how Danielle fits into all of this. I can't help but notice how Tanya and Danielle seem so close. We've gone through our phases of hope for those two. <laughs> Danielle is one of our favorite people. But at some point, we realized that how awful it would be if they dated and it didn't work out. And then he wasn't in our life at all. Yeah, we've realized at some point that if they're going to end up together, they would have to figure it out. But isn't that the most classic of stories? An epic love story spanning decades? Well, I think Tanya and Cliff seem to be a great match. I think there is a perfect match out there for Danielle. Somewhere. <laughs> Tomorrow's Christmas Eve, Eve. Obviously, you couldn't make your move in the carriage with Cliff there, so tomorrow will have to be your day. Okay. You know, maybe we can even find a better grand gesture, something to do with the Empire State Building. Right now, all I need is an easygoing interview before we wrap up. We can talk about the anticipation, speculate about how things might go down. Oh, um... I, I, I need to check something. <laughs> hey. All good? Yeah, sorry, I have this project. There's a few of my mom's recipes she didn't write down, so I'm trying to figure them out before I forget. <laughs> the cider is one of them, and tonight is spice cake. It smells amazing. It'll be nice while we're recording. Right. Um, Kate, you can just pull this chair up and get started. Wow. I already saw. <sighs> Are you not? An expert on all things Christmas in New York? No. I, uh, I mostly stay in and, and do things like this. Though the cookies in Park in Little Italy, that's... that's real. That was my favorite part. You know, a wise woman once asked me, is the Christmas spirit really something someone can be good at? I think she called it ephemeral. Sounds wise. So you're not upset? No. I mean, I'm not surprised. We did come up with most of it together. <laughs> yeah. And I think we succeeded with Christmas in New York. The Schultzes have had a magical time. You know, whatever happens with the podcast, whatever happens between you and Tanya, it's clear this family really loves you. That you'll always have a place in their lives. I don't think you'll ever lose your spot in case that's the spot you were really afraid of losing. <clears throat> Let's figure out your big move for tomorrow. My big move? The combination of yours and Tanya's love story. Right. Uh, well, we have all this audio recording. The family, Tanya, me, you. Maybe it's like you said that first night. Maybe there's a different angle, a 
different story in all of this. I've been building it up on you getting the girl. Things can shift during editing, but there's only, there's only so much I can do. Maybe the B love story becomes the A story. holiday celebration kind of makes it uneven. How about seeing if Cliff can come back early? I mean, it's it's a shame he should miss all of this. Right. Yeah, it's worth a try. <laughs> oh, well, this is off the record, right? Of course, I, I don't even have my recording equipment set up. You don't even have your recording equipment set up? I... I, I didn't, and then I realized my phone was recording, and I just downloaded everything. I meant what I said. I wasn't going to use that recording. We're on the same team? Huh? We are. Look, I can explain. You encouraged her to invite Cliff back early just to make things harder for me. Look, it was a temporary lapse in judgment. Okay, my producer kept talking about a love triangle and creating drama, and I was confused. No, wait a sec. I forgot I had even told her that. And then he showed up, and either way, I knew I had made a mistake, and I immediately went back to our original plan, the one we agreed on, where we were on the same team. I didn't want to lie to you. Besides, didn't we just agree the story changed? If I did make it harder for you to get the girl, that girl, does that even matter now? Yes. Because I don't trust you. I'm not recording any more of this podcast. I'm done. And by extension, so are the Schultzes. I know we signed releases. I can't do anything about that. But if you do put this out in the world, please don't make fools out of this family. I would never do that. trust me. Well, did you tell him how you feel? Yeah. No, I'm almost. We were talking about the B love story. Before it all got obliterated, now the podcast is ruined. Well, uh, I suppose Janice finally got some of that drama she always wanted. I can't decide whether to drop it and cut my losses or try to salvage something. I don't know what's worse for the Schultzes. I mean, having that all have been for nothing or airing a podcast where they're being fooled. Either way, I, I don't even know how I'd structure it. There's no conclusion, and <laughs> all the characters dropped out. Uh, uh, uh. Not all. Uh, not you two. Listen, like it or not, you're in the story, my friend, and it's worth looking into, isn't it? Might this be the way into telling the kind of story you wanted to tell anyway? This is about the Christmas spirit flowing from your heart and your gut. And I guess my question is, why do I need your help? I'm like your coach. Or tour guide. Concierge. No, regardless, we're on the same team. Mm. 
Thanks for meeting me. Oh. Oh, you look serious. Okay. Is it the pitch presentation? No. I wanted to let you know that the podcast has been canceled. Or it might still be produced, but we're no longer doing any more recording. Oh. That's too bad. I, I really like Elise. Also, I have a confession to make. There was a secret angle to the podcast. On the surface, it was about me showing you and your family an amazing New York Christmas. <laughs> but it was really about me winning your heart. I agreed to it because when Christmas plans changed and Cliff came in the picture and then you got raspberry on your chin, I panicked that I had overlooked this unrealized romantic love between us. And then I became thoughtlessly competitive and I was terrified of being replaced. And? Then it wasn't the case. <laughs> there are no unrealized feelings. We're friends. We always have been. It's okay, because the same questions came up for me for a moment. It would have been a classic love story, I guess. Yeah, but not ours. <laughs> no. Is that why there's no more podcast? No, uh, at least and I had a disagreement. Oh, that's too bad. I feel really badly for deceiving your parents. I understand if they're angry. I mean, is it that terrible of a lie? They both had a wonderful time, right? I know I did. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, buddy. This chestnut guy is the best kept secret in New York City. He's always moving from location. Hey, to hey. Location. Hey. How's it going? I am not sure if I'm tearing down the rom com or celebrating it. Mm. Not sure if this is the best or worst idea I've ever had. Well, I brought some Thai, enough for lunch and dinner. Thank you. So I'm heading out this afternoon. What do you have planned for after you turn in tomorrow? Probably cook, watch some movies. Definitely staying off the internet and social media because I won't want to know. Do you hope he will listen? I don't know yet. OK, well, good luck. Merry Christmas, and I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best. Take care of yourself. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Bye! <sighs> now that I see this executed, I don't like it. This, this line down the middle feels like a barrier. I'm just finishing up some meetings at the cafe, but when I get back to the office, let's go with the other version, the Elf and Reindeer reviews. Uh, Plan A, quirky connections. Thank you so much for joining us on this Christmas Eve. Eve, do we have a fun idea for you? Let's imagine that this elf is sneaking away from the workshop to go to a gingerbread cook-off with his best friend, Blitzen. And of course, these characters are interchangeable and flexible. And as far as commercials go, we were thinking there's always a bit of fun to be had when we license a Christmas classic and add our own lyrics to it. Suvi night. That's gonna be stuck in everyone's head. Uh, pleasantly stuck. Brian is a fan. He's a huge fan. I'm sorry, weren't we talking about connection last time? Oh, oh, yeah, these two are connecting through their phones, which is the promise of the app. Yeah, I, I suppose what I'm saying is I don't feel connected to that. Yeah, I can see that. And no offense, but you don't really feel connected to it. I suppose that when you think of connection and Christmas, the first thing that comes to mind is family which seems obvious enough. But the definition of family is so broad that when I try to think of visuals for family, I, I'm stumped. Um, like, hold on a sec. Like, do we compose a picture of a standard nuclear family over dinner? My Christmas family growing up was my neighbors. Some people's families are their friends, their coworkers. Some people's families live far away. 
I recently met someone who was using cooking as a means to celebrate and connect with her mother, who's no longer with us. She misses so much. How could we even begin to capture that connection? It really is the ephemeral, the unexpected moments in between that hold all the magic. And it's hard for someone in advertising to admit that it's difficult to construct those. I wish I had put something better together for you. Better luck next time. See, this is what I'm talking about when I say alive and raw. Let's touch base after the new year. Let's get going, boys. Thank you. Merry Christmas. What was that? Let's get started. And that's how this narrator, despite her best efforts, fell into the narrative and also into love. Hey, Dad. Took a little quick thinking on my part, but I think I really nailed that Christmas inspiration. Speaking of which, I have a proposal. We never spend Christmas together, and I think we should. You guys should fly out next year. You know, I recently became an expert on the New York Christmas experience, and I could be your guide. It would mean a lot to me. So. Let me know. Merry Christmas Eve. in all caps. Yes, I did. I was very excited. Oh. Podcast is already trending on social media. Seems to be getting a lot of listeners. It was so clever of you to bring in that live life winning call. I just finished listening to it. Uh, all of it? <laughs> already? Yeah. I listen to most things at two and a half speed. It is very invigorating. Uh, and what do you think? It's kind of like when restaurants put bacon and ice cream or rosemary and whiskey drinks. At first you're like, oh, what? And then you're like, oh, okay. I guess some people like this kind of thing. <laughs> Look, it's clear that this kind of storytelling is not my thing, but I still felt compelled to listen to it. <laughs> Especially since I made a cameo. <laughs> I see you took my love triangle note. Good work. I don't know if it's me or if it's all this Christmas spirit, but I think you should keep life in the light going. And in the new year, we should look at you heading your own department. Seeing as you're so good at this sort of thing, we should maintain some variety, I suppose. It's Christmas after all. That would be great. Excellent. Merry Christmas. Oh. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Rosemary. Oh my god. What did you finish? I, I did the shopping. Oh, yes. there I, 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 ho ho! <laughs> Oh, hi! Hey. Good morning. <laughs> hey, Danielle, you're here. Oh. oh, let me take your coat. Thank you. And I've got your place right here. <laughs> Good morning, Cliff. Merry Christmas Eve, Danielle. Merry Christmas Eve. <sighs> Sorry. About. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I mean, can't exactly blame you. <laughs> so, how'd the pitch go yesterday? We got the account. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. And, and actually, Fred, I ended up using your photos, which were essential for the success of the pitch. Huh? Did you hear that, guys? Mm -hmm. Essential. <laughs> yes, we heard, Fred. 
Oh, I have to say, it just feels strange not having Elise here recording everything. Mm -hmm. Have you guys listened to the podcast yet? I, I saw that it was posted online. We decided we'd listen to it on our drive home mm -hmm. post-Christmas, in case it's upsetting. It's Elise. Would you guys really think it's going to be upsetting? Yeah, I probably won't listen to it at all. Let's eat. Yeah, okay. Here, Here Fred. Oh, it looks nice. wonderful. Have some berries, do Oh, my favorite. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. This looks unbelievable. Hi, it's Bonnie. Leave a message. Hi, Bonnie. Uh, you're, you're probably out of range or with your family, but uh, I just want to tell you I figured out the cider. Rosemary. Just a tiny sprig. Anyway, I just, I just wanted to share that with someone. So there you go. Cheers. City, help me celebrate. happy I am and surprised my mom and dad are coming in for Christmas next year <laughs> well they'll have a wonderful guide thank you I have a confession I know Fred said that we hadn't listened to the podcast well I may have listened to bits and pieces when I could sneak away it's really good I skipped the last episode because I had to know how it ends you might want to listen to it. I don't think I'm up to it. Also, where would I find the time? <laughs> Danielle, it's six 40-minute episodes. You skip the ads, sorry. It's under three and a half hours. It's trending on social media. Chris Kringle. It all started with a man who called himself Chris Kringle. I'm gonna stick with that moniker to protect all involved. Actually, wait, I, I need to go further back. As many of you know, for years I've been doing this podcast in my own, I'll admit it, safe storytelling style. Frankly, he drove me nuts. He asked for my help and then rejected it, being constantly competitive, he insulted my Christmas Manhattans, argued with every little thing like arguing was a reflex. But I should remind you, it was only fair since I actually had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> but when they were snowshoeing, I saw such closeness between them. Perhaps it wasn't even a storytelling strategy for me to have Tanya invite Cliff back early. Maybe. I was the person who subconsciously didn't want him to succeed at getting the girl. I'm not sure I can identify when I first caught feelings, but when we arrived at that window with the couple dancing, the thought that popped into my head was, that should be us. Editing this podcast is like going back in time and shaping events. It made me wish I could alter so many actual things. Lying to Kris Kringle. I wish I had leaned my head in and, and kissed him in that park in Little Italy. If there's a lesson here, at least for me, it's let yourself into the narrative because that's how this narrator, despite her best efforts,
Hi. Merry Christmas Eve. Um, how did you know to find me here? Well, it was either here or Rockefeller Center. <laughs> My parents are coming in for Christmas next year. They already bought their tickets. Danielle, that's great news. I took your advice. Thank you. So how'd it go with the Schultzes? Everybody knows everything, but it's okay. And Tanya? We're still friends, as we've always been. What were you listening to? This really compelling podcast. Everyone's been raving about it. It's not a boring podcast. No. It's hard to be bored when you're in the story. And there's a certain way you want it to end. The end is still uncertain. Ambiguous, I mean. No, it's not. Are you going to get that? It's Patty. She says if you two lovebirds are free, they still haven't had dessert yet. You should go. But it's nice and warm in here And it's even warmer when you're near On this snowy Christmas Eve So stay with me as we wait for Santa's sleigh We'll share this holiday together and get cozy by the fire 